Hi there, welcome to the first day out. Just coming out the marina now. So, going down the main channel and just watching out through the boats, it's quite busy. So, what I'm going to do today is I've got the creel on board and it takes up rather a lot of room. So, the plan is to try and feather up some mackerel, use that as bait in the creel get the creel shot uh, somewhere and I'll explain how I'm going to do that and why and that'll give me more room on the boat and we can have a look at it later on in the uh, in the week to see if it's caught anything so as you can see Myla this is what it's all about out on the water and uh, let's hope there's some fish around over the next couple of weeks Okay, I'll come back to you when we're feathering up and we'll have another chat about what I'm using. So I've just got a uh, six feather trace on, uh, four ounce lead, and just bouncing this off the bottom here. Not seen anything on the sounder just yet. There's a, a navigational mark just here, a permanent one near a, an obstruction and I saw on Facebook somebody catching some mackerel here about a week ago. I think they've moved though. Thought I'd give it a couple of uh, drops here, keep my eye on the sounder and then we'll move around a little bit. Behind me is St Moore's and we'll be going there during the week, meet up with family, get a pasty. That should be good. So we're in about <clears throat> 11 meters here. The rod I'm using today is a 2.4 meter. Well, at least that's what it started out life as it's about six inches shorter now i broke the tip off it a while back it's been repaired just a bit shorter it's an akuma and uh it's a, an akuma g-force and it's a really nice little rod for this sort of thing if you get a couple of mackerel on here up the right bend in it abu garcia reel what's this one a 176i I've had it ages. So good about a second one. They're not expensive. Nothing showing up on the fish finder, so I'm, I'm going to make a move. I'm going to head further out into the channel there. Just a small mackerel, but that. Yeah, I could just need a few more of those little mackerel. That one's going to work just great in the uh, in the creel, and we'll send that. Um, we'll go out and do the creel in a minute. But if there's some mackerel around, I'll just fish a few more up, and we can use them as bait later on. So what small bit of breeze we did have has really died off, and it's absolutely calm. Fantastic! It's really warm. I can see a couple of commercial boats. There's one way off here, another one behind me. I even think this very small sailing boat over there without the sails up, I think he's fishing as well. One more mackerel for bait and a pair for tea would be ideal. It's what you call fishing to order. <laughs> I wish. In around 20 meters here, so maybe the fish are a little bit deeper. I keep winding all the way up just to see if they're shallower in the water. So I just wanted to tell you a little bit about the creels. These creels are a Scottish design. They were made by a retired fisherman uh, in a town called Bucky, 
on the Murray coast up in uh, Scotland. Not far from me. Um, I got him to make me two creels and I'll tell you a little bit more about the second one later. They are both the same. Being a Scottish design it has the open uh, ends here are a soft neck. So there's no parlour in here. There are two soft neck openings in here. They're quite distinctive with these orange pipes. You actually see a lot of them around on that Moray coast. Finecti, Pornocchi, places like that. You've also got a bungee cord here with the bait bag. And that mackerel, that little joey mackerel we caught earlier is gonna go in here. Now, I'm quite interested to know if my Scottish creel is up for the job of catching these wily Cornish lobsters and Cornish crabs. So I think that's gonna be quite interesting to see how it goes. I'm only an amateur. I, I'm not making a living out of this. So when it comes to sending the pot, the creel, over the side, wh where I will put it will be somewhere that's not next to commercial creels, uh, that is kind of very much on its own. It may not necessarily be the best place to put the creel. The reason for that is that I, I just don't want to tread on anyone's feet. They're trying to make a living out of this. I've been following for a long time another channel called One Man and His Boat, Barry Brunton. He's built his own boat, fitted it out, made a wonderful job of it, and he's built his own creels and he operates out of Dunbar. If you want to see how this is done sustainably on a commercial level, then go take a look at One Man and His Boat on YouTube and you'll see how this is done. You remember I mentioned there was a second one of these creels. I don't have it here with me today. That's because I promised it to Barry. I wondered if he'd fish the Murray Coast creel alongside his own creels and see if it makes a bit of a difference because his design is different to this. The creel's not been in the water for nearly 12 months. It, it's got a big lump of concrete in to sink it. It'll take a while to, to properly get into its swing, I think. So I'm just gonna fish this as a, a single creel. We'll send it over the side. I'll work out how much line we actually need so I don't have lots of uh, polypropylene floating on the surface that will get in somebody's propeller or something like that. And I've got a nice marker boy on it. When I do drop the pot, I'll be remembering to take a, a GPS lap long so I can come back and find it. So that's the pot. That's how I'm going to use it. Ah, there is some discussion um, about whether you should be using fresh bait or stinky bait, old bait, and what's best. Now, I don't really have a great deal of options here today with it being my first day out. It's going to be fresh mackerel. Can't wait to get it off the boat because it really takes up a lot of space in here. I'll fetch you back later when I've decided where I'm going to put this out of everyone's way but hopefully somewhere where it'll catch the odd lobster or crab. And then we'll come back and have a look at it in a few days time. Right, so just so you can see what I'm doing, I've put a couple of slices in this little joey mackerel. And that can go in our bait bag here. And uh, when you pull this cord over, that also gives you access to get in to get the lobster out and get one. Pull this cord over. And uh, I'm going to go a little bit further out this way. It's going to be about uh, 11 metres, I think, when we're on high tide. And uh, that should be about right. We'll come back and have a look at it tomorrow. So when the creel goes over, important to keep your feet flat on the floor so that you don't get your feet stuck in any of the rope and go over with it. Okay. So that's what we're going to do now. Send it over. It's going to go over this side.
and you can see that uh, with it not having been in the water for a while it's almost floating there for a minute it's just slowly going down I've just set a waypoint and call it Creel and I've just been back to check it, navigate to. Also going to put one on the second GPS system just in case the first one uh, I lose it or something. But I'm taking a few transits as well. We've got the lighthouse over here and the caves here. I'm pretty sure that uh, I'll be able to find a, a vague area where it is even if I didn't have any electronics. So let's just make sure we've got the second GPS marker set up and, uh, and labelled and we'll come back in a day or two and have another look and see if we've got anything there. I'll see if it's still there. Sometimes your creel gets nicked. So that's the creel all set out there. So I think now it's probably time to uh, head off back in this direction and see if we can't get some more mackerel. Be really nice to have a couple of mackerel for tea on your first day. So we'll head back that way, see what we can do. Keep my eye open for the gannets and anything else, see what's feeding. So I thought it might be worth saying something about what I've got as a pot hauler. It's just made out of some old plywood and this bit is the centre of a wheelbarrow wheel. The tyre went flat so I used the centre on here. Let's put a big bolt through. The cutout here just fits on the gunnels. What it actually means is you can get your rope in here and pull on it rather than it going on the side of the boat. and a conger eel in there. Well, uh, we go around the corner and uh, we'll uh, take the gear out of it. Glad I got that. That was quite a rough old, uh, there's a hell of a swell here. Good few metres, I think. The headland's disappearing underneath the waves. Just on my limits, I think. I wouldn't want to be out here in any worse. Right, I'll catch you in a minute. So that was a bit lumpy getting the lobster pot up, the creel. So it's here. And I can see some things in it. We may need to use this, and this is the measure. You measure across lobsters shells with these make sure that the right size so down here in Cornwall it's 90 um, millimeters and that's what that distance is and I'll show you that in a minute there's also a conger eel in here and I have to confess they're not my favorite for picking up so I'm gonna look like a bit of a wuss I'm gonna wear my gloves and uh, Hopefully, it's not too angry. Let's have a look. So here's the first thing, a nice lobster. So when we get the measure on it, it's actually 
well in size to take. I'm just looking at the tail because if there were any V notches out of that, you wouldn't be allowed to take it. I think this is a female. It's certainly got some nice claws. How about that one? So that just goes to show that your Scottish Creel can get a lobster down here. Okay, now, let's see if this fellow wants to come out. Okay, whoop! Told you it looked like a wuss. It's going over. So back in the car. I just realized um, I'm on my way home and I realized I hadn't done an end video. So yeah, um, I managed to get the creel back. It was a bit lumpy. We got the lobster and it is in, in size and um, yeah, that's coming home. I'm going to eat that one. We also had that strap conga and um, that one went back pretty sharpish. I ain't keen on them. So it's been a really successful day. Um, I've enjoyed that. It was good to get back out and uh, after 24 hours and get the creel and to find that it actually got some stuff in it. Uh, it was just on the on the cusp of not being able to get the, the creel back. It was actually quite lumpy out there. I've still got the creel in the boat. I'm not going out tomorrow. So I'll be going out the following day and I'll put the creel back out, check out the forecast and decide where I'm going to put it. Um, probably put it somewhere, if we're going to continue to have easterly winds, I'll put it somewhere where it's a little bit more accessible. Right, so there you go. The Scottish Creel catches Cornish lobsters. Brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, should be some more this week and next, hopefully. See what we'll get up to. See what the weather lets us do anyway. Okay, bye for now.